And now we're going to start with lesson one. And bear in mind, it's only like six or seven lessons, so it's not that long. And once you start with lesson one, you should see a hyperlink right here. And click this hyperlink, and then you should be directed to a page right here. Oh, sometimes these computers. And now, the first thing you need to do is go to the top right corner of your computer or laptop, and you should see two, um, two, uh, uh, two links, one login and one sign up. Click sign up. Wait. Wait! You do not have to sign up. This is completely optional. There is no reason for you to sign up unless you want to save your work. But you don't have to save your work. You can do everything that we are giving you without signing up. You can probably even copy the code and the editor and some other thing in order to save the work or something like that. So you don't have to sign up. You can if you want to, but you do not have to. You don't have to. Got it? Good. Um, the second thing you need to do is go to this uh, little black arrow down here and just press it. And this little arrow just represent the console. And we're gonna talk about the console later on in the activity. Now, after signing up and after getting rid of this little console, you need to, well, let's see if the program worked, right? So press this little play button and voila, you should see Hello World on my computer. It's looking a little funny, but there you go. Hello World, the program worked. And now we're gonna begin with lesson number two. And for that, I'm going to pass it over to Dr. Urban. Great, thanks. Um, so the thing to realize about this is that it certainly looks like the computer is going through this code. I'll make it a little bit bigger for you guys. It looks like the computer is going through this code and it's just doing it once and it's saying, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write hello world to this screen. By the way, the screen in this case, this is what's called the canvas. So if you hear people talking about the canvas, it's this thing over here. And it's going to write it to the screen. It certainly looks like it's only writing it once. Right? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, I'm going to prove to you that it's actually being run multiple times. And so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to write uh, this little function here that's going to print something to the console. So, and we're going to print, we just ran the draw function like that. And if in fact the draw function is only being run once, we're only going to see that once down on the console here. But if it's being run a gazillion times, then we'll see it multiple times. So, so let's, let's get ready to do this. I'm gonna hit play. There we go. And we're writing hello world to the screen again and, and all, these, all these messages showed up in the console because it's running over and over again. It's running 60 frames per second. So 60 times a second it's running this draw function. And the reason that's important is because we wanna make our games to run at the highest frame rate because that's gonna be the most fun and the most interesting. And so we've got a setup here that allows us to do that. So that's important for you to know about the draw function. And now we're gonna talk about some of the rules that govern the program when you're coding. So comments are just secret, not secret messages, but they are messages from one programmer to another. Okay, so imagine you doing this program for your teacher and you wanted to tell them what a particular line of code or section of code was doing, you can make a comment. And to make a comment, all you need to do is press two slashes, and you can write anything you want, like, hey, Orban, this rocks. A little exclamation point, voila. And the comments uh, are not read about the computer, so you don't have to worry about the comment interfering with your program. And to prove that, we can press play, and you still see the program work. Now, the last thing we need to talk about is parentheses or brackets. Anytime you have an open bracket or an open parentheses, you need to close it. So to prove that, let's see if we let's see if we close or get rid of this closing bracket. You see all of these red and yellow marks appear in a program area, uh, program editor, and that just tells you that there's a problem and you need to fix it. So lesson is anytime you open up a bracket or parentheses you need to close it now those are just some of the rules that govern our uh, program our editor and so let's talk about 
um, variables. And for that, I will call on Dr. Orba. Sure. So if we're going to make a physics-based video game, uh, we're going to have to use some kind of variables. And every programming language has kind of a different approach to, to using those variables. So how are we going to do it in this one? Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a variable for the x position of the center of our hello world. Uh, I'm going to make a variable. I'm going to call that x hello. And I'm going to set that equal to the width of the screen divided by 2. Because it's already kind of set to that, right? And if, if you look into it more, it turns out that the width of the screen is actually the 750 here. Uh, and so that's what that variable is. So it's 750 divided by 2. And I can do the same thing for uh, a new variable I'm going to call y hello. I'm going to set that equal to height divided by 2, just like it is in the, in the draw text function. And so instead of just sort of giving this function those, those, uh, those numbers, I can do x hello, and I can do y hello, and we'll see if we get you know, the same thing that we've been getting all along. If I hit the play button, hopefully we still get a hello world over here on the right. And sure enough, we do. So that's, so that's how the variables work in, in, our, in this programming framework. Hello guys, I'm back. And the last thing we need to talk about is the controls that we're going to use to make games, all right? So the controls we're going to use are the arrow keys on the keyboard, okay? The left, right, up and down arrows. And we're going to use those to make a ton of games in the future. But right now, let's get a feel for them, right? So let's jump back to our worksheet. And if we scroll down to lesson seven, we will see a bunch of code, okay? And so throughout the future exercises, it's OK to copy and paste code. And to copy code, all you need to do is highlight the uh, text and Control c right? And so let's jump back to the editor. And let's paste this code right beneath the draw text function. And the paste code, all you need to do is Control v and voila. Now, now let's play the code, the uh, program, and we will see the message we saw earlier, uh, earlier. And now let's tap the canvas. And if we hold down the uh, down arrow, you will see that the message disappeared, right? So it's there, now it's gone. It's there, now it's gone. Now, we're going to use this uh, keyboard in future exercises to play games and make games to play Angry Birds and Lunar Descent games and a whole bunch of games we have in the future. Now, let's move on to Move the Block.